Blue Quill has a robust analytics engine that tracks many different kinds of learning interactions and displays those in various different ways to users. This video is an overview of some of the interactions that are captured and some of the ways that data is accessible to users. Blue Quill uses the Tin Can API, also known as the Experience API, which is an industry standard for tracking all types of learning interactions. What makes Blue Quill unique is the way that we display these interactions in the interface, offering real-time feedback to both teachers and learners. Blue Quill also has a robust reports engine that gives administrators access to specific data that they are looking for. First, let's take a look at some of the different ways that an instructor can view analytics while a course is running. When I first log in as an instructor, I see my course with upcoming assignments here. If I had more than one course, they would all be listed. From this page, I can click the plus icon where it says analytics and get a list of my students and how they are progressing through the course. This is called the analytics dashboard and the purpose of this dashboard is to give the instructor a big picture overview for how students are progressing through the course. The first column shows me the student's grade progress. The blue bar represents their current grade while the black line represents their previous recorded progress. This tells me if they have improved their grade or if they are not doing as well as before. The next column is called conditional progress. This is specific to if there are conditional objects set up in my course. If there are conditions set up, this line should start to go higher as students progress through those conditions. The next column is analytic events. This simply gives a bird's eye view of how much each student is interacting with the course. Every interaction that the system records, such as a student opening a learning object, submitting an assignment, or participating in a discussion is recorded. This gives me a general idea for how many of these events are getting recorded for each student, which gives me a general idea for how much they are really interacting with the course. The next four columns are specific analytic events that are recorded in relation to specific tools that are set up. Again, this is meant to be a big picture overview for how students are interacting in the course. The Discussed column tells me how many discussions the student participated in out of all the discussions created in the course. The Submissions column shows me how many assignments the student submitted out of the total possible assignments with the Submit tool turned on. The Assessed column shows me how many assessments the student completed out of the possible number of assessments created in the course. And finally, the Attended column shows me how much the student has attended the course which comes from the attendance tool. Once I go into my course as an instructor, there are many more analytics that are available to me. First, there is the activity grid. When I click on this, I see a list of students with more columns. This view is intended to give me more specific numbers each week about certain activities in the course. Notice at the bottom, I can click the arrows to navigate to previous weeks in the course. For any given week, I can see how many times each student accessed the course, how many times they accessed learning objects from the calendar view, how many submissions they have made out of the possible number of submissions available for that week, and how many topics, responses, and replies they have created in the discussion tool. This view gives me an idea of student interaction per week, such as how many times they have accessed the course materials, and how much they have submitted or participated in discussions. Next, I will show you the analytics view. This will give the instructor both a general overview of interactions and the ability to drill down for more details. The first analytic it shows me is the student heat map. This is my course with a heat map over top of it that shows me activity levels for each object. I can change the activity that is being displayed and change the heat map color scheme. By default, gray is no activity, green is low activity, and red is high activity. The activity it is showing is how often each learning object is open from the course. I can see that some are no activity, some are low, and some are high. I can change the activity that displays on the heat map. For example, I can choose the submitted a final file to activity to show me how much students have submitted to various learning objects. 
If I want to get more specific data, I can click on Student Timeline. This will show me a calendar with each day of the course on the left. I can tell from this view which days had a lot of activity or just a little bit of activity by the colors on each day. I can click on a day to see all the interactions recorded for that day by all the students. I can see the time, the student's name, and what they did. There is also a filter on top where I can choose a specific activity to filter by, such as marked as complete, which will show me all the students who marked objects as complete. I can also filter by a specific student, so I can see all of their recorded interactions for that day. This view is intended to help instructors know more specifically the learning interactions that students are performing in the course. In addition to the real-time analytics that instructors can view, there are also administrator level reports in Blue Quill that utilize our reporting engine. Only administrator level users in Blue Quill have access to these reports. Some examples of these reports include the average assignment score per section, the average student score per section, student enrollment status, published courses, students who have never logged into Blue Quill, and many more. Let's look at how one of these reports works. The first report is called Average Assignment Score Per Section. When I click on this, the report generator opens in a new tab. For this report, I need to provide a date range and optionally an assignment name. I will put in a date range and click Run Report. The report generates and from here I can download it as a PDF or CSV file. There is an almost infinite number of reports that we can create using this tool and are adding new reports all of the time. That was an overview of analytics and some of the reports in Blue Quill. We are continuing to add and improve the analytics tools with each release and we have some exciting new features that we are working on for future releases. Thanks for watching.